Welcome back to the Colin Thompson Show. A little fun thing we're doing here over the summer. A little content creation with Jack in the back. Jack Connell, what do you got for us, buddy? Nothing much, man. We're going to do – I've got – the people want to know. I mean, they haven't asked yet, but they, I can tell they want to know. They're waiting for these answers from you. I've got a mixture of some NFL questions alongside some just some generic life questions and sports in, in general. So, I mean, we'll start on the football side of things. What was your welcome to the NFL moment? That's a great question. I think the welcome to the NFL moment for me is when I actually got cut from the Giants. Woke up in the morning after the preseason game against the Steelers, preseason game number one, 2017. Wake up, rolling around the floor, stomach's killing me, get rushed into the hospital to get surgery, emergency appendectomy. The doctor comes in who's going to do it from the Giants. He's rubbing the mustard off his shirt from his wife on a Sunday. They're out to lunch. He came in and did the surgery. Felt great and got cut 48 hours later after I told I was, you know, I was going to be with the team and I was going to be given two weeks to get healthy and I, I'm a part of the future of the roster. So I think the welcome to the NFL moment for me is when I got cut from the Giants after just having a casual conversation with the assistant GM and then just saying, hey, Colin, come in here. It's not personal, but we have to let you go. It's training camp. We need your roster spot. We're going to bring you back. Uh, they never did. I still had to work out with them down the line too. So it was no really love loss. It's part of the business. But, yeah, that was definitely my uh, welcome to the NFL moment. It started not for long media, too, because I knew the NFL stood for not for long. So that's why we're here today. Beginning of it all, really. I mean, yep. it's a positive end to a bad – I guess you would say a bad story. Yeah. But what would you say is the hardest-hitting defender you've ever faced in, through college, NFL, whether it was on your same team, opposing team, whoever? There's some really hard hitters I've faced over the years. I'll say college, the first guy that comes to mind, there's going to be two guys that come to mind. One was John Bostic, who I ended up playing in the, against, in the NFL, too. I played against John in Florida. The other one was at Temple was Avery Williams. Not the biggest guy, but, man, he could lay the wood and hit people. And then the NFL, I've been hit hard. Trust me, I'm not going to say I haven't. But more in practice, I've been hit harder when I was with the Giants. Uh, Devon Kennard, who now plays with Arizona, who's like an outside linebacker. But he was a Mike linebacker at the time, a middle linebacker, like 255, 260, like a Jeremiah Trotter thing. We motioned in the backfield, and I'd run lead draw, and he would just light me up, absolutely light me up. Um, yeah, so those are the three guys that kind of stick out, just asking me up top of the cuff that that I think uh, that have hit me the hardest over the years. That's quite a list. I mean, it's, I could never do it. I mean, it's just the thought of having to line up against a Miles Garrett or a Khalil Mack 40 times like in one afternoon, it, yeah. it's definitely a challenge. So with that, I, I mean, I personally, I know the answer, but the, the audience does not know. Who is your favorite tight end ever and why? So the greatest tight end ever is Rob Gronkowski. It's not close, in my opinion. No one has blocked, catch, run after the catch, jump ball, every route. He's good at it. Dominant in the past game. Absolutely insane what he's done and the injuries and the stuff he's played through. So Rob's the best of all time. But my favorite all time is Jason Witten. He's the most film I've watched. He's the most I've tried to replicate. Uh, Jason's a great athlete and a big man. I think I'm the closest to him. I'm nowhere near him athletically, I think, but I'm trying. And uh, more relatable to my routes and the things I do in the passing game. And then obviously in the run game wise, there's not too many blocking tight ends out there um, for what he had. He did really well. Um, he was really good and blocked for a lot of really good running backs, huge years for DeMarco Murray, big years for Ezekiel Elliott, Rondé Barber, uh, not Rondé Barber, the man who, um, Marion Barber passed away. So, uh, I think Jason Witten, to me, is my personal favorite tight end of all time because probably I'm the most relatable. I can see myself doing more of what he does than maybe some other guys around the NFL. As an Eagles fan, I would I could tell you very clearly, Witten wouldn't even crack probably my top 10 favorite tight end. I could probably go 50 tight end before ever mentioning Witten. I mean, phenomenal player, like you said. It's just I can never admit same way with any Romo or any of them. But <laughs> we'll switch gears a little. We'll do a little more casual. It's a hot dog a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich, folks, because there's not too many categories of food around here. There's not like the hot dog section. When you go to a restaurant, it's sandwiches. It's underneath the sandwiches, right? It's in the kids' menu section. It's a sandwich because why? The rolls just connected at the bottom. If you took a cheesesteak, which is a sandwich, folks, and you drop the hot dog in there, all of a sudden it becomes a hot dog. There's no such thing. So a hot dog is a sandwich 
It is a sandwich. The bread is just connected at the bottom of it. It's a sandwich. Just like a cheesesteak is a sandwich. Just like a hoagie at the end of the day is a sandwich. It's a sandwich. People get caught over the type of bread. They don't understand that all bread is essentially bread. It's like, oh, well, it's a different Bread is bread. Roll. Now, exactly. pota- potato roll, I get it. Hawaiian roll, I, I understand it. There's different flavors. But sesame seed bun, no. It's a it's a sandwich, brother. Exactly. All right. Who would who would you pick to win in a fight? A bear or a gorilla? I think we talked about this before, and I think it was really easy. I, I think it's the gorilla. It's the thumbs. It's it's everything that they have to offer when it comes to the punch, the grab, the pull, uh, the way they run, the way they move laterally, all the things they'd be able to do. He would be or she would be too quick for the bear who's still very good predator obviously but they both have sharp claws i think the gorilla would win by a landslide and i don't think it'd be even it just wouldn't be close it'd be very quick under a minute the bear would be done i feel like it would be i i think it would be contested but like i said i think the opposable thumbs that's the that's the difference maker right there all right so what is the go- it could be any genre it doesn't have to be sports what is the best movie or your favorite movie? We'll say your personal favorite movie. It's a great question, Jack. So for me, it's two movies that are in my wheelhouse of just humor and fun. First, it's Caddyshack. Second, it's Wedding Crashers. <laughs> to me, that's the two that make me laugh the most, that I enjoy, that I constantly am talking about, that I am constantly mimicking from – all the jokes in Wedding Crashers to all the jokes in Caddyshack. I was raised correctly, just like my son or daughter will be as well. They will be raised correctly, and they will watch Caddyshack and learn about life. Um, so, yes, to answer your question, Jack, it is Wedding Crashers, and it is Caddyshack for me. They're my two movies. That's an interesting one. I would go in that. My favorite, it's a stup- It's the stupidest movie of all time, Hot Rod. Have you ever seen that? It's like Andy Sandberg. It's like Bill Hader. It's from like 2007. It's the best stupid funny. There's only like a five minute clip in the middle of it of Andy Samberg just falling down a giant mountain. Like continue. It's the stupidest movie of all time. It cracks me up. All right. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Who's the GOAT? Michael Jordan's the best basketball player to walk to earth. Michael. Yeah. Let me get this again. Michael Jordan is the best basketball player to ever walk the earth. LeBron James is the best athlete to ever walk the earth. That's That's my opinion. Mike, obviously, successfully, what he did, incredible as a basketball player. Same with LeBron, right? LeBron is like almost 40, and he's just really could be MVP of the league every year. He's been healthy other than this past year every single season, other than like a sprained ankle or something. He's been absolutely dominant. He's changed the way – business media has worked. He's changed the way about player mobility, player empowerment for the better. So LeBron, again, we're not talking politics. We're talking sports here. LeBron James is the best athlete, in my opinion, to walk the earth, to be that big, to be that strong, to be that lean. He probably could put on another 50, 60 pounds if he really wanted to if he was playing 30 games a year. But to do what he's done for so long, Best athlete to walk the earth, LeBron, and then best player ever is Michael Jordan. I think that's pretty fair. I was reading an article earlier today, actually. It was like, well, I forget when it was from, but it was basically Michael Jordan talking about how he would stop LeBron and how he couldn't. He's like, he basically said, I could not stop him when he puts his head down and drives. And it was just basically how he would defend the move that would go in. And that was pretty interesting. I was hearing how a goat would pretty much cover another goat. It's interesting to see that sort of thought process. But continuing the ter- in the trend of sports in general, the favorite jersey, I, any again, this can be high school to professional college. Your favorite jersey you ever worn, specifically at home away, like it's one singular jersey. Wow, that's a great question, Jack. Hmm, that's tough. That's tough. I, I think I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers jerseys, black, white, electric blue. You gotta pick one. It can only be one of those three. Which which is at the top of those three? I think our, our Panthers black jersey is my favorite of all time. Okay, that's pretty. Best have been good enough that they haven't changed it in 25, 30 years. You know, super, super, super swaggy. My swagger is way up. 
I'm not that good looking of a guy, but in the black jersey, I actually look pretty good. So I'm going to go Panthers, black jersey, 4,000. <laughs> and then our last one to wrap things up here, who is the funniest guy in the locker room at, at training camp? Where Who is the guy that just cr- will always crack everyone up? Wow. I thought I was prepared for this, but – there's there's a lot of really funny guys I play with over there. I'd say Chris McCaffrey's one of the funnier guys on the team. That's an interesting one. He is dead serious, don't get me wrong. And he is a workhorse and he is a grinder and he is the hardest working guy I've ever played with. But C Mac is pretty funny. C Mac's pretty funny. So I'm gonna go Chris McCaffrey. He's a one of the uh, one of, if not the funniest guys on the team. I mean, like you said, he strikes me as a very stoic figure. Like you said, like very serious. I could never see that he would ever flip that switch to be a funny guy. I just can't envision that in my head. It's just a weird flip to see. It's almost like we see Peyton Manning, like screaming Omaha and everything on the field, being like this insane, intense guy. And then you see him on SNL, just like pelting kids in the head with footballs. Yeah. Yeah. No, Christian's dead serious. Don't get me wrong. Dead serious. And just, yeah, that's the best way to put it. He's dead serious. But, when he's uh, hanging out, when he's you know playing ping pong in the locker room and he's just trying to be a normal person, get away from football, Christian's up there, one of the funniest guys in the locker room for sure. Well, that will that is our 10th question. So I guess that will wrap up our first edition of 10 with Tapia. I'm, I'm interested to see how the people react to your takes. I mean, they're always in an uproar over your takes, whether it's Wayne Gretzky and McDavid, the Stanley Cup. I mean, most people were in grades with their Stanley Cup take. Arch Manning kind of rattled people. It's, you're definitely a decisive person with your takes. You have to be Jack. You got to stand steadfast on the truth in life. All right. It's not an opinion. It's truth. So appreciate everybody listening. Appreciate everyone's support of the Colin Thompson show and not for long media. We look forward to talking to you guys soon. Sending your questions down the road for 10 with Tompy. We appreciate it.